Ready, Troy? Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, guys, we're recording. I'm going to set the mood with a question. You already set the mood with your iPad. It's super So business, official, right? Yeah. I actually have the pen as well, which oh. I use when I play Candy Crush. Okay. So it's like to flick my fist. My mum taught me that. Right. Okay, so who would win in a fight, me or you? Maybe me, but through like... Um, mm -hmm. through weird techniques like okay. pinching and biting and scratching. Interesting. Now, we both did grow up in Perth. Mm. Do you know where Mandra is? Yeah, of course. I'm from Mandra. Whoa. Yeah. Maybe I take it back, actually. I reckon you could beat the shit out of me. Just be wary. <laughs> okay, next question. Which song off the new album would be most likely to be covered in Glee if it was still airing? And what would be the plot? Did you watch Glee? I loved Glee. Okay. For a few seasons. Up I season three when they go to New York. Yeah, see, I don't remember that, so I yeah. must have fallen off. They would probably just do the single. I think they would do Rush, which, unlike getting the chill, was thinking about what that would... That'd be so what iconic. That would sound like. But, I mean, the plot would probably be, like, a gay one. I could also see something like... Because Ryan Murphy always had something fun going on. So yeah. I'm imagining that the floor got cleaned and they all like hallucinated something and then they started singing Rush, which is like something that happened in season five. Got it. There was a gas leak and then Blaine hallucinated that everyone turned into puppets. This is, this is real Glee? Yep. Confirmed. I could be lying, but I'm not lying. Wow, yeah, I trust you with this, with this stuff. Rush would be a f perfect fit for Glee. For a hallucination scene. Yeah. From Floor Cleaner. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. Let's do it. So, where does this new era sit for you if you had to rank your own eras? I'd say it's number one. Okay. It's the top dog, for sure. Yeah. You know, like, when I think about them, the way that they are, like, they feel in my head. Blue Neighborhood was, like, soft boy, teenager. Yeah. very in my feelings. Bloom was like, ooh, I'm really gay and like, that's fun. Mm -hmm. um, and now this one is like, I think it is full-fledged, like, I just feel like I really know who I am. You yeah. know what I mean? You know how people are always like, ooh, your 30s, you end up feeling really sexy or whatever. I, I can kind of already feel that I'm like, oh yeah, I feel like I'm a little bit more grown up and I'm like more so confident. a confidence and, thing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did that make the process easier or was it still really difficult no it was easier for sure okay. i think also just like knowing my um knowing myself better like yeah i didn't ever try force it like yeah. if i used to get so depressed if i would write a bad song um and think that like i was shit and that you know like why did i even get signed and all that stuff yeah. and um and now i know that if something's not working we just like go get beers call it a night, come back with fresh ears the next day. And like the whole process was just infinitely more fun because I was so much more relaxed. Also, I was like kind of being a bit stunty and we like, we wrote it in Stockholm and London yes. and Melbourne and LA. And like, um, I was definitely living my fantasy. Yeah, I was actually, I was gonna ask when you're writing, it doesn't sound like you need to be in a specific location to be able to write. Do you, mm. Is there some things that you have to do before you start writing that kind of get you in the zone? Um, like routines, I guess. I feel like I have to be fed. That's pretty much it. Yeah. If I've eaten, I can write. I mean, obviously, I think travel is really inspiring. Like, yeah. and then also like not just traveling for work, but making sure that you actually carve out time to go for dinners and go out and meet people and stuff like that. Cause, um, that stuff can be really inspiring. Absolutely. The amount of times that I've like whipped out my voice memo app discreetly on the dance floor just and recorded like... to take it to the studio the next day. Yeah. Happens all the time. Okay. So the second single of Something to Give Each Other got me started. I would love to know how this one got started. Pardon. Have how did you come it? up with the concept and how did you know that a bag writer's sample would work? Have you heard it? Yeah, it's great. Oh, I love it. It was the first song that we wrote for the album. Oh, and okay. it started when I saw Janet Jackson at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh my God. And I was obsessed, like absolutely Performer. obsessed. Incredible. Like, yeah where I, I had this moment where I was like, oh, she is where everyone learnt it all. Like, yeah. she is the the blueprint. Something about that phrasing in the chorus of Got Me Started reminded me of something that she would sing. And so I was like immediately obsessed with that chorus. And then we had what's the post chorus, which was just this empty kind of space. And um, I just started to sing Shooting Stars, the Bag Raider song in the room. It just felt really good. And I was kind of giggling because I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, It's so fun. It's so fun and iconic and like it's never gonna get approved so and then i texted my mark colland who works at my label in australia because i know that they're australian and i was like what other chances do you think of me getting that sample mm. literally within 20 minutes he texted 
bag raiders, I guess. And, and, and I had cool. like the stem, like the, the original thing yeah. was in my text. That's so cool. And it was like isolated and I just felt so lucky. Like I felt like I had this little piece of gold. We put it in and then that doesn't mean though that it's been approved. Like mm. we just had it in for ages. And then finally when it came time to like actually getting it approved. They were like, we've had hundreds of requests for this sample and we've never approved it before. And for some reason they, they did. That's so so I think it's because we're both Australian. The song was really about like, I just thought I was like emotionally dead. Like I didn't mm -hmm. really feel anything um, for a while. When did you write it? It was a long time ago. Uh, I don't know if it was 2020 or 2021. It's like lockdown it was like, vibes. Yeah. And I just like, I hadn't even wanted to like take anyone home or anything like that. I was just yeah. like not in that zone at all. And then finally I met someone who like, it was the tiniest little spark, but it was enough for me to be like, oh my God, I am not dead. Yeah. And um, this is really exciting. And so, th I mean, that's essentially, I love the lyric. It's like, um, Boy, can I be honest, I kind of miss using my body. Fuck it up just like this party did tonight. And um, it just felt very fun and cool and yeah. real to me. Interesting that you say that because I have a question about the lyrics in the song. Mm -hmm. Because you say the album, album title in the song, mm -hmm. which I love when artists do that. It's like in movies when they say the movie title. Yeah. Love that. Did you know the album title was going to be something to give each other before you made the song or vice versa? It's very chicken and the egg. Right. I don't remember the f which was the first song that I did it in. Um, but it's like a tag. It happens like four times or right. maybe five times across very the Very Caroline Polachek. Very Caroline Polachek, very Jason Derulo. It's it's my my producer tag or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so since you are now famously in the sensory experience realm, mm. what does this song smell like? What does Got Me Started smell like? Got Me Started smells like Luca by Tzu Lang Yo. Okay, get it's that like, promo in. Yep. Speaking of the pop-up, which mm -hmm. you had last week in Melbourne, congratulations on that. Thank you, you very much. so well. You came. It was so good. I appreciated it. Yeah. I bought pool. Yeah, nice. Pool. pool boy. Exactly. We had a chat mm. at the event and someone took a photo of us talking and sent it to me, which is such normal behavior. <laughs> but then I tweeted this. Can I show you? Said that we were talking about the complexities of quantum mechanics. Yep. In response to that, do you think that Einstein felt the rush when he was working on his stuff for relativity? I would say so. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know what, like, what that is. What he did. Well, really. his, it's his equivalent of slaying, basically. Yeah. yeah he so ate he felt that. the rush on the way through. Yeah. I'm really excited to ask this question. You made a couple of TikToks about Hyunjin from Stray Kids. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite Stray Kids song? Well, when does this come out? This interview. I think September, end of September. September 22. Cool. Okay, so yeah. this will be out by then. Yeah. Hyunjin hopped on Rush. <laughs> and so... With Pink Panther. With Pink Panther. Oh my God. When's that? Um, like tomorrow. Yeah, that's so iconic. Okay. Um, and so that's probably my favorite. I was going to teach you like one dance move, but I think we have enough time for that. But my last question is, what do you think this Troy would think about the new album? I think God. this was from when you were showing Wild. Whoa. Like way back on YouTube days. Yeah. When you were like starting to pivot. Yeah. What do you think he would say about the album? I reckon he'd be like a little bit um, scared maybe. Is that confidence? That you're talking yeah, about? I think so. Or just like even I'm really just like going for it. I'm having way more fun and like I'm trying to do choreo for the first time. Love. And like, yeah. You know, just like doing stuff that really scared me when I was that age. Yeah. So I think he would be intimidated, but I also think he would be so like excited. really, really stoked and be like, oh, I'm really happy that we're doing yeah. this, you know?